Hello there and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here each week discussing interesting topics and meeting interesting people. And that's certainly the case this week as we have Dr. Bob Blackburn on the show. Yes, we're going to talk a little history uh, during this show with Dr. Blackburn. Uh, the, the old phrase, the past is prologue, tells us that, what, uh, that we can learn from what's happened before. We can learn about what happened historically and, uh, and improve our life today. And that's, of course, the whole mission, I think of the Oklahoma Historical Society and the Oklahoma History Center. Dr. Blackburn is a noted author. He is also a very popular and, and entertaining public speaker, is so knowledgeable in Oklahoma history. I suppose he is the uh, most knowledgeable person on Oklahoma history that is alive today, and he tells it with such vivid detail that you will think he was there when he uh, describes the events of our wonderful state's heritage. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's a brand new, beautiful place that is available for our citizens to see, and they can take advantage of it. We will learn more about it. Dr. Bob Blackburn, the Oklahoma Historical Society and the History Center, when we return on The Verdict. At Chesapeake Energy, here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. I'm Dave Bialis. Coming up this month on Generally Speaking, she's the first lady of Oklahoma basketball. Sherry Cole sits down with us this month. We'll talk about the upcoming season, her aspirations, and the pursuit of a national championship. You know how it is with anything that you're passionate about. You feel it. You can stay up all night working on it. You're not tired the next day. That's a pretty good sign that it's probably the thing that you should do. That's Generally Speaking, found only on the Cox Channel. Just keep it. Thank you. Dr. Kessler? What's up with the pizzas? Well, I just got my first satellite bill, and those extra fees were a bit of a shocker. So I had to take a second job. Hey, this was supposed to be pepperoni, Dillweed. Hey, it's Dr. Dillweed to you. Whatever. Kids. <laughs> it's cool, eh? You know, I'm a people person. Don't live in satellite denial. Get all your entertainment without the hidden charges from Cox, your friend in the digital age. And welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guests. We are very pleased today to have Dr. Bob Blackburn, the Executive Director of the Oklahoma Historical Society and, I guess, the Oklahoma History Center, uh, joining us. Uh, Dr. Uh, Blackburn has his MA and his PhD from Oklahoma State University. He's the author of at least 13 books and many other publications. He's been with the Oklahoma History Center uh, since 1980. He's made numerous appearances on the History Channel. He's uh, our resident uh, historian emeritus uh, in Oklahoma. He wouldn't call himself that, but those who know him do. <laughs> and we're really pleased you take time to come talk to us about what's going on at your, at your exciting place. Thank you, Ken. It's good to be here. Uh, Dr. Blackburn, explain, I guess, first of all, the structure of your organization, how it pertains to the state of Oklahoma, and, and how you're set up as an entity. Yes, Mayor. We were organized 1893 by the Territory Press Association to do one thing, to collect newspapers. Today we have 30 million images of newspapers in our collections on 35 millimeter microfilm. So that's saved forever. We still get over 130 newspapers a day that we are still microfilming. So we're still achieving that original mission. Well, it expanded beyond that. We became a territorial agency, 1895, a state agency in 1907. And today we're a statewide organization with museums and sites, historic preservation, education, uh, and now the History Center. Hmm. 
fascinating. We have a, a public service announcement that you all have just recently produced. I think tell us a little bit more about what are we going to see in this before I introduce it. This is a PSA on the Oklahoma History Center. Okay, on the, the building new building. Itself. Yes, the new building. All right, here's the public service announcement from the Oklahoma History Center. Imagine a place that captures the Oklahoma spirit throughout time and space. The Oklahoma History Center is that place. Experience the stories of American Indians, settlers, and soldiers. Explore African-American towns and cultures. Revisit the Wild West shows. Open seven days a week, the Oklahoma History Center is located next to the State Capitol Building on the northeast corner of 23rd and Lincoln Boulevard. picture. I mean, that last thing, it looks like a painting That's there, it. seeing the state capitol in that dome. Yeah, beautiful place, Thank beautiful you. setting. Uh, tell us what's going on out there now. What kind of exhibits do you have out on display now at the History Center? Well, in November, we opened for the first time. This is a $59 million project, 18 acres of land, outdoor venues such as the Red River Journey, where you can see a scaled landscape of southern Oklahoma with the Wichita Mountains, the Arbuckles, the Winding Stairs, plant life from around the state. Our oil patch exhibit with a brand new oil derrick that, that represents the cable tool rigs of the 1920s. And then in the building, after you see that beautiful view of the state capitol across the street and the replica of the Winnie Mae above, you can go into four museum galleries uh, divided into the image of Oklahoma, American Indians in Oklahoma, uh, business, industry, transportation, and then land runs, rural institutions. And so we tell the entire story of Oklahoma. If you looked at every exhibit panel and every photograph and watched all of the 52 video features, we think it would take about four days to see everything. Well, then I don't feel bad because I've been out there half a dozen times, spent two or three times looking through exhibits, and I know I haven't seen half of what is available. Because what happens is you, you think you're going to move through this gallery fairly quickly, and something gravitates your attention or grabs your attention, and you gravitate toward it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a fascinating place. Well, you must be deluged with visitors then, and particularly school classes. We expect 60,000 school kids this year. Wow. Uh, we do charge an admission for the museum, but school kids get in free. And uh, we had about 2,400 people there Saturday for September Fest, so it was a big day at the museum, and that's about all we can handle. So we expect 60,000 school kids this year. And we have an educational staff who will dress up like a cowboy or a, a settler who made the land run of 89 or an oil field worker who'll come in with the oil on his, on his hands. And we get kids back in time. We actually take them back to a point in history and we engage them with living history, with the videos, with the curriculum units. And so they come out of there with a very good experience. Are you staffed with uh, all paid staff, or do you have volunteer staff as well? We have volunteers in both the library and in the museum. Our volunteer staff in the, uh, and we call them staff, they're unpaid staff. They go through the same training, we go through seminars, they have their badges just like regular staff. And we're up to about 150 volunteers. Wow. And they engage the public, they help with school kids, they help with September Fest on Saturday. Without our volunteers, we could not offer the level of service. Which of the galleries seems to be uh, drawing the most uh, response? Which, which ones do you see that the crowds gathering around to view? If you're from central Oklahoma especially, I think the, the gallery on the image of Oklahoma, because especially for us baby boomers, we connect with Woody the birthday horse that was on Foreman Scotty's show. Mm -hmm. And we have the, the uniform from 3D Danny when he was in the Space Science Center <laughs> on WKY. And Bazark. And we have Bazark. It's, you do he, have He's Bazark? on his way. We, I remember Bazark. We have commissioned a Bazark, and so there will be a Bazark in the exhibit, plus a Bazark someone can sit. Do you know who Bazark is? I have no idea. I was just <laughs> pretending. <laughs> Bazark was a robot on da 3D Danny. <laughs> That's right. Oh, okay. Kind of like CP30. I've seen pictures of Bazark then. Yeah. Early yeah. day version of Buck Rogers, but it was localized. Yeah. And Danny Williams on that show outranked the Mickey Mouse Club, mm -hmm. and it got national attention. But we have exhibits on the way Hollywood has depicted Oklahoma's image, a 19-minute film that is wonderful about how Hollywood has depicted Oklahoma, the myth and the reality. Uh, we have exhibits in there on photography, on performing arts, and so that connects with everyone, whether you're from J Japan or Germany. They've seen mm -hmm. those same movies. I think a lot of people from around the country really like the exhibit on American Indians. We did that in a unique way. We combined a traditional cultural center. And most Indian people look at history more like a cultural center. It's hard for them to view it in the classical Western European sense of you can take history and remove it, turn it around, look at it upside down, 
and from all directions. We combined a cultural center with the traditional museum. And so you don't go in and start 10,000 years ago. You come in and you see the origin stories. So the Kiowas came from a hollow log. And then you go into spirituality and languages and what Indian culture means to Indian people and how that has survived until today. So we give people a view not only into what happened in the 19th century, but what happened in the 20th century and what is happening in the 21st century. So we hope this is an engaging, interactive type of museum that will continue to grow. Will Rogers, Wiley Post, what, what's there that uh, would remind us of those two? Uh, the first thing you see when you come in the building is the replica of the Winnie Mae. This was a Lockheed Vega that, that uh, Wiley Post designed and, and fabricated. In this airplane, he discovered the stratosphere. He discovered the jet stream. No one knew that jet stream was up there until he got up high enough and all of a sudden he found it. He des developed the very first pressurized spacesuit in history. If you go into the Smithsonian, the first suit is Wiley Post. Well, we have exhibits on Wally Post. We have all of his collections. The material, his sleeping bag, he took with him on his flight around the world in 1931 that he then repeated as a solo pilot in 33. From Will Rogers, we have his tapes, we have radio broadcasts, we have some of his writings, his books. We use Will Rogers to explain American Indian heritage because his father was a Cherokee senator in the Cherokee Nation in the 1870s and 80s, grew up as an Indian, expressed his Indianness through his language. He also expressed what was unique about Oklahoma as an actor, as a writer, as a performer who connected with so many people around the world. And he, for many people in a certain generation, Will Rogers is still an icon of what it means to be an Oklahoman. We're discussing the Oklahoma History Center with Dr. Bob Blackburn and we'll have uh, more on this uh, show that's about Oklahoma history but also about the History Center itself and if you've not had an opportunity to visit I hope you'll make plans to do so this fall or winter. More with Dr. Blackburn when we return on The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> It sure is a blessing. <laughs> All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Oh, hi. I know you guys said I'd save with Cox Digital Telephone. Well, my bill came and... Could this be right? You may be surprised how much you save with Cox Digital Telephone. That's why over a million and a half people have switched. So this really is a total. Lovely. Because I think I found a good use for the savings. With Cox, there's no waiting for the other shoe to drop. The only surprise is, there's no surprise at all. And 
and welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Our guest is Dr. Bob Blackburn of the Oklahoma Historical Society. Uh, Bob, 2007 is our centennial year, of course, and I know that we've had Blake Wade and Lee Allen Smith on talking about the centennial celebration, but I suspect your organization is deeply involved in the activities in 2007. Can you tell us what how you're involved. Yes, sir. Well, we've been involved since the beginning. I helped write the legislation when Blake and I were working together at the Historical Society. I'm on the commission. And we see the History Center as a platform from which to launch projects, to support projects. So the, if there's a video project going on or a photo contest, we're probably there because we have five million photographs and we have a video producer and it goes on and on. But specifically in the History Center, we have several exhibits planned for the centennial year. We will be doing the inaugural concert with a Kilgan organ, which was bought by E.K. Gaylord in 1937 for WKY Studios in the Skirvin Tower. We've had it restored, and we will have the first concert in December. So that will be a centennial project because the centennial year starts November 16th. Then we will go to a Smithsonian exhibit on code talkers, how Indians have served the military services uh, and communications. And then in February, our big centennial exhibit is on the governors of Oklahoma, where they were born, raised, family influence, occupation, spouse, family the decision to run for public office, the campaigns, the election, inauguration, then I'll end the story. Then we go to the next governor. And then a complimentary exhibit will be on the first lady's gowns. We own all the gowns of the first ladies who have gone to the inaugural ceremonies. Mm. So we will have these exhibits in the History Center, but we will be supporting other projects like a folk life festival, a food festival of soul food where you can come and get soul food again and have educational programming. And then around the state, we will have a 1907 uh, statehood uh, ball that will move from site to site where we will have music from 1907, the dances. We will have a dance instructor who can teach people how to dance to the tunes of 1907. And we will start this year on New Year's Eve with our centennial ball at the History Center. I would imagine you have a board of directors that's uh, f throughout the state. Is that pretty much the setup? It is. Uh, we have 25 board members. They are organized by six congressional districts, a couple of at large. Right now, our, the chairman of our board is Leonard Logan, an attorney in Veneta, Oklahoma. But it truly represents the wide spectrum of Oklahoma, both geographically and constituencies. Uh, Thirteen are elected by our membership, so if someone wants to help direct the policies of the Historical Society, they can become a member and vote on the board. Twelve of the members are appointed by the governor, so it's a nice mixture of the private side and the public side. I know you have a research library of um, some um, renown. Tell us about that. Yes, sir. If you are doing Oklahoma history, you have been to the History Center. If you've done any family history, you've been there. I like to say that building history and really telling the story of our state is a matter of building blocks. You start with the smaller pieces and then you put these pieces together and you get up to the big trends of transportation, politics and government, legal profession. Well, it all starts with families. And so where we put a lot of our resources is to help people do their own family research. So any given day, you will see people at the 18 computers that are free to the public getting onto national databases, searching for those ancestors. The influence from South Carolina or Arkansas or England or Vietnam or Mexico. We want people to understand who they are and how their families have evolved and what cultural baggage these families have brought to Oklahoma. And then if you go beyond that, it's how these families have worked together to create the community of Oklahoma City in the 1950s or uh, Guyman in the 1990s. And so all of this blending of all of this cultural baggage represents what's unique about the state. So we start with the very basics and then we start adding five million photographs our uh, 6,000 manuscript collection, some of which have up to a half a million documents. George and I's collection alone is over a half a million. We have 500,000 document pages, or excuse me, 5 million document pages on Indian history. When they shut down the Indian agencies, we got all of that material. So we literally have an entire wing full of materials. The Chamber of Commerce collection, I gave a tour this morning to the entire chamber staff. We have 700 volumes of the business history of Oklahoma City going back to 1897 in those documents. And then you throw in the newspapers that go back to 1844 and that first newspaper published by the Cherokees, one column in Cherokee, one column in English, and we have the first draft of history on a daily basis. 
Let me ask you about that. You said you had 16 computers out there. Does that something that somebody, a citizen can just walk out and use, or do they need to make a reservation? And do you have people that can help them in, in that regard? How does that work? The computers are free. And then we have all of the U.S. Census records back to 1790 for every state in the Union on microfilm. Well, in addition to that free service, we have a staff that is very hands-on. If you walk in and say, I think that I've got <laughs> Cherokee heritage in my blood, but part of my family came from North Carolina, well, we can get you into the records and help trace that Cherokee heritage. We can trace you back to North Carolina. And then if that North Carolina family came from Ireland, we can trace through the ship registries and look at tax records and church records in Ireland. So we, we can really do it all, A to Z, and help you get to other collections around the country through our network. Hmm. What uh, programs do you have uh, besides the History Center here in Oklahoma City? Because I know you have facilities throughout the state. Uh, mention some of those that are the more popular. Yes, sir. We have 35 museums and sites. Uh, there are two museums in Guthrie. Uh, as we go farther away, we have the what we want to be the Living History Farm in Perry. We hope soon to have a 1907 Living History Farm where you can walk back in time. We have a project in Enid that is the Museum of the Cherokee Strip. Lou Ward and other community leaders are leading a $6 million fundraising campaign to expand that facility. Uh, we have the Morrell Home, the oldest antebellum mansion in the state in Park Hill outside of Tahlequah. We have Fort Gibson, Washita, Towson. We're uncovering a riverboat right now that sank in the Red River in 1838. It's intact from the deck down. We pulled off cargo. We're now pulling up the paddle wheel. It'll come out in two weeks with a Chinook helicopter. So we have these statewide programs with museums and sites. Then you throw on top of that the fact that we uh, manage the State Historic Preservation Office. If you have an old building or looking for a tax credit to renovate or trying to figure out how to replace those windows, we're the people who can help. Or if you want an old building recognized, we get buildings on the National Register. We have educational programs such as History Day that gets teachers and kids involved in, in doing research and production on some part of history. Uh, we reach out with helping people with their own archives. We assist Indian tribes with their own archival collections. We consult with local organizations on how to preserve the records of their local clubs. So we are truly statewide serving the people in the Panhandle, McCurtain County, Ottawa County, Tillman County. We're everywhere in this state. Uh, what, what's new uh, besides your new building? What can we look for in the next five years? In what's the on the drawing board is really what I want to ask. Well, we're always looking ahead. I just left a luncheon meeting today where we want to do a major exhibit on the history of outdoor recreation in Oklahoma. Hunting, fishing, birding, photography, uh, hiking, camping. Uh, we're working with the Wildlife Department. We want this to be a major exhibit to open sometime in 2008 but we're starting now with the collection process, the preservation process, telling the stories. I really want to do more with the history of business in Oklahoma. Unfortunately, the society never directly collected the legacy of businesses in the state. I'm now reaching out, and other staff members reaching out and trying to get the records, the artifacts on our business history. And we want to do that so we can tell the story of economic development. And then we have several new museum projects, films. Uh, we'll have a TV show premiering on Cox Channel in Oklahoma City and Tulsa here coming up in November. So we want to reach out and share more history with more people. Well, that's very convenient. I'm glad to hear that, that Cox is involved in doing that. Bob, on behalf of the state, thank you so much for what you do to preserve Oklahoma's his history and, and uh, provide access to our children and, and to all ages, really. Uh, to, uh, to promote and preserve uh, what we have to, to be proud of. Thank you. Uh -huh. Dr. Bob Blackburn, uh, Thanks, Bob. Executive Thank Director you, of the Oklahoma Historical Society. Kent and I will be back right after this. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm.
Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. I'm Chris Paul. And I'm Dave Lyell with some of our friends from the Boys and Girls Clubs in Oklahoma. Growing up is tough. Everyone needs a fun and safe place to learn and grow. Boys and Girls Clubs offer programs that instill a sense of pride, purpose, and belonging. Club kids have grown up to become movie stars and, yes, even basketball legends. We hope you'll join Cox, Oklahoma in supporting the Boys and Girls Club. Get involved with your local club today because it truly is a positive place for kids. You need this one to get satellite HD. This one's your DVR. This one's for local channels. Mm. This one's... What are we supposed to do with all this stuff? Got you covered. Oh, by the way, that old satellite stuff makes a great end data. That doesn't look so bad, right, honey? Don't live in satellite denial. Get the latest entertainment without the hassles. From Cox, your friend in the digital age. Welcome back to The Verdict, wrapping up a show on the Oklahoma History Center. I tell you, Dr. Bob Blackburn is a fascinating man. Fascinating guest, fascinating subject, and a great institution for our citizens. And uh, we have some web information, so you can go on the Internet and find out more about Dr. Blackburn and all the work that he does down at the History Center, okhistory.org, as well as theverdict.tv. That's our website, so that uh, you'll be able to go on that website and tell us more about what you'd like to see on a future edition of The Verdict. I'm going to go out there and uh, get on one of those computers and see uh, what my genealogy is. I do know that my grandfather limped because he fell off one of those drilling rigs in the 20s that he was talking about having really? a replica. Yeah. Fell off and made one leg shorter than the other. <laughs> Not quite sure how that happened, but that's a, that's a historical fact. A lot of stories like that. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.